So summer is coming, but over the winter you've been bulking. Or maybe you've just let yourself go a little, and you just want to see your abs again. Or maybe you just want to see them for the first time, but you have absolutely no idea where to start. Hi, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty. I'm a male model, physiotherapist, and fitness enthusiast. And in this video, I will be giving you a complete step-by-step -step guide to getting that summer beach body. And if you stick around to the end, I will be giving you extra tips and tricks. The first and most important stage is setting up a caloric deficit. Have you seen or do you know those people who always seem to be on a diet? One day they're eating salad for lunch and the next day they are tucking into some chocolate cake and saying, oh, I'll start my diet tomorrow. And as a result, they don't seem to be getting anywhere. And then whenever you ask them what their caloric deficit is or how many calories they're eating, what their macronutrients are, they just look at you really confused. The basic principle for weight loss is calories in must be less than calories out. It really is simple math, but it is easier said than done. We want a steady rate of fat loss, so we need to set up a proper caloric deficit. A good amount of fat loss would be about 0.4 or 0.5 kilograms or a pound of body weight per week. So you've got to find your maintenance. So what I suggest is download MyFitnessPal and log what foods you eat for an entire week. Just what you eat intuitively. Then you want to weigh yourself every day and average it out for a week. And what you'll find is your weight doesn't really change that much in the week. You'll be the same weight at the end of the week as you were at the beginning of the week. You have now found your maintenance, congrats. Your maintenance calories are the calories that you consume to maintain the weight that you are already. It's a state of homeostasis or maintenance of a constant internal environment. There are about 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. If you put yourself in a 500 calorie caloric deficit per day, then over the course of a week, which is seven days, you will be in a 3,500 calorie caloric deficit, which equates to one pound of fat. So subtract 500 calories from your maintenance and those are your cutting calories. So in six weeks, if you're losing about 0.5 kg or a pound of body weight per week, then after six weeks, you would hopefully have lost three kilograms or about six pounds. Something to note is that the initial weight loss that you experience will mostly be glycogen and water weight, as the body does not want to tap into fat stores initially. Some people choose to make their caloric deficit a little bit larger, so up to about a thousand calories, but this can be a little bit more unpleasant, perhaps less sustainable long term, especially because if you're dieting for longer periods, i.e. more than eight weeks, then you will probably start to lose some strength in the gym and you'll also feel sluggish. At the same time though, you don't want to make your caloric deficit too small, i.e. 100 calories a day, because then it will take you longer to see the progress that you want to see. So as we already briefly touched upon, you want to establish a time scale for your diet or your dieting period. This can be anywhere from about six weeks to about three months. Now, if you choose to pursue a shorter dieting period, then you can actually be a little bit more aggressive, i.e the caloric deficit can be a little bit larger, but if you go for a longer dieting period, then you might choose to be a little bit less aggressive because you want more of a steady rate of fat loss over a longer period of time. Personally, I prefer to get it over and done with. My dieting periods are about six weeks, eight weeks at most, but six weeks of more intense dieting with a 500 calorie caloric deficit is what suits me. So you just have to find what works for you. The second thing is that strength training is essential when you are dieting. So a study was conducted where they had two groups of men and these two men were put on the same diet. They had the same caloric deficit, but one group was allowed to do strength training or resistance training, i.e. lift weights. The other group was not allowed to lift weights. And over a period of a few weeks, the group that was allowed to strength train or perform resistance training kept pretty much most of their muscle mass and therefore lost primarily fat. Whereas the group that was not allowed to do any resistance training lost a similar amount of weight, but most of it was muscle mass. So the analogy I like to use, and I use every single time, is that your muscles are like your wife or your girlfriend. If you want her to stay with you, you have to treat her right. In the same way, if you want to keep your muscles, you have to treasure them, you have to look after them, you have to treat them right by giving them stimulus, such as resistance training, lifting weights. So on my channel, I've made loads of videos on how to build an aesthetic body. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link in the description below. And I'll also leave a link in the description below for a video that actually has another link to a free upper body and lower body program. So definitely go and check that out. 
Step number three, to do cardio or to not do cardio. Of course, as a fitness enthusiast and a physiotherapist, I would strongly recommend that you do cardiovascular activity for your heart and your lungs. But if you are looking at doing cardiovascular activity purely for the purpose of being able to eat more, then there might be a better option. This is because when you do cardio, you actually upregulate your appetite. So you actually end up needing to eat more or you feel like you need to eat more. As a result of this, the chance of you overeating is a little bit higher. You are actually better off just doing caloric restriction and not doing any extra cardio. However, some people just want to eat more food. So there is another way. You can increase your NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is your total number of steps that you do in a day. This is any sort of activity that is not exercise. So for instance, if you work as an artist and you're painting, or if you work as a builder and you're doing day-to-day -day things, carrying things around, you work in construction, that is all non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is stuff that you do that isn't specifically exercise. For example, let's take the number of steps that you do. If you wanna eat more calories, then you can just do more steps. If you do 10,000 steps, that's about five miles. And the calculation is that for every mile that you walk, you can times it by your body weight and that will give you the extra calories that you get to eat or the calories that you've burned while walking. So if I went out and did 10,000 steps or five miles, then I would do five times by 80 kilograms, which is roughly my body weight. I'm about 81 kilograms, but let's just say for the purpose of this video, 80 kilograms, and therefore I will have 400 extra calories to eat during the day. But of course, cardiovascular activity is still extremely important for heart and lung health. So I would still advise that you do it, just not for the pure purpose of getting to eat more calories. But a side effect would be that you do get to eat more calories anyway. Step number four, let's talk about some extra diet tips that you need to know. Meal times are important. Your body is very intelligent. It knows when it should be eating. Let's say that you normally eat dinner at about 8 p.m. Let's say that on one particular day, you decide to eat dinner at about 5.30 or 6 p.m. Your body will still be hungry at 8 p.m. because that's when it's accustomed to eat. Eating slower and taking more time to chew your food is also another diet tip that you should be following. So essentially they did studies and found that you should be trying to chew your food for around 20 chews before swallowing. Studies have found that your stomach is actually about five to 10 minutes behind your brain. So you won't register that feeling of fullness in your stomach until it's a bit too late. So eating slower, having dinner, having a meal with friends where you're having to talk or drinking water, sipping on water throughout your meal is a nice little diet tip that you can use. I would recommend having a glass of water before your meal, one during your meal and one after your meal. So of course dieting can be hard because if you want to eat out in a restaurant and you don't want to say to your friend who's having their birthday party, sorry, I can't come to your birthday party because I'm dieting. Or when you go to the restaurant, you don't want to bring out your Tupperware with your chicken, brown rice and broccoli and say, this is what I have to eat. You actually want to enjoy the nice food that the restaurant is serving and and you can because life is about balance to an extent of course you don't want to go overboard but what you can do is save up your calories for later on in the day when you go to the restaurant for dinner we know that restaurants don't really care about your macros so they're going to put more fats and carbs in the food to make it taste better there's also going to be more sodium so bear that in mind the next morning if you look a little bit more bloated so if you know you're going to a restaurant in the evening then you are best off having more protein and fewer carbs and fats during the day so like chicken and salad for lunch keep the carbs a little bit lower because you know when you're going out you've got to save up those calories for later so if you go to a steakhouse you can have steak and chips and not feel bad about it and still be in that caloric deficit of course if you want to be successful then preparation is key in order to prepare correctly for your diet you need to make sure you're buying the right things at a grocery haul so picking more whole foods foods that are higher in volume i saw a video years back of matt ogus when he was dieting he was still eating chipotle and what he'd do is he'd buy a chipotle rice bowl and with a bit of lettuce and rice and chicken and he, i think he put beans in i don't rate beans so i i wouldn't have beans but he had that he had peppers and then he got a massive bowl of salad from like costco and he mixed it in so then he had this massive bowl of chipotle with extra salad he said that it worked really well because the calories were low 600 calories for the actual rice bowl and the salad was virtually like no calories it's just fiber and water he had this massive bowl of food which filled him up for low calories you want to make sure you feel full even if you're having fewer calories so 
Another example of this would be to not have chips crisps because those are lower in volume dehydrated slices of potato. So you're better off having either a jack of potato or if you want to make chips you can get a nice potato before you bake it cut into slices, spray some olive oil spray on it, uh, salt and pepper and put it in the oven and it's basically a baked potato but it's like a chip with really low fat. Try that out, it's a great recipe. So you want to keep your protein high as we talked about already. How much protein? 0.8 grams per pound of body weight is sufficient. Any less and it might be a bit of an issue if you're trying to maintain muscle mass. But if you're eating more than 0.8 grams per pound of body weight of protein, then most of it just gets like weed out basically. Step number five is frequently asked questions and final thoughts. The biggest one that I get is what if I messed up on my diet? This is a topic I love talking about because I've been there, I've messed up my diet so many times. And an OG YouTuber called Brandon Carter talks about this in some of his earlier fitness videos. So eating healthy for one day or eating right for one day isn't going to affect weeks, months, and even years of eating poorly, of having a, a rubbish diet basically. In the same way, if you eat healthy every single day for weeks, months, even years, and you're on track with your diet 99% of the time, and if you cheat on your diet on one day, or for one meal, it's not gonna make any difference, right? For longer dieting periods, I would recommend like a refeed day. So a refeed day is where you keep your protein the same, you lower your fats a little bit, which is around like 60, 70 grams, and then your extra calories that you get from going back to maintenance will all go into carbohydrates. And this will upregulate a hormone called leptin, which will make you feel less hungry. So that can be a positive of doing a refeed day, but the same sort of effect is achieved with a cheat meal or a cheat day. It can just also be like mentally just so helpful. But if you mess up, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. I've been there. So many fitness influencers have been there, like bodybuilders on prep have been there. Don't plan cheat days, maybe plan refeed days. But if you end up having like a cheat meal or a cheat day, it's not the end of the world. And of course, remembering your why, like why are you trying to diet down? What is your goal? You're obviously, in this case, if you're watching this video, then you're trying to get that beach body, you're trying to get shredded. Remember that nothing worthwhile in life is ever easy. There are gonna be days when it is hard, when you feel like eating that extra pastry or that extra potato chip or that extra portion of chips or that extra portion of pasta, you're practicing delayed gratification and you're gonna achieve the body of your dreams. I hope that this video was helpful for you and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found.